Here's another scripture reference from Dr. Brown, Deuteronomy 33, 10, right? Here's another scripture reference, 26, 68, Deuteronomy. He goes back again to 1 Chronicles and Genesis 10, 3. He also references Jeremiah 51, 27. And here's another scripture reference, Matthew 23. In all, in his first round, Dr. Brown references nine scriptures. Now, and we see the scriptures on the slides. So why is it that they, the people in the chat, those who are primarily of, you know, various Hebrew factions, why they kept saying that he wasn't referencing scripture? Here's my hot take on that. It wasn't that he wasn't referencing scripture. He wasn't performing scripture. Mm -hmm. That's the issue here, I believe. Because for many of them, not all, of course, but for many, for them, when they hear scripture, it's always with a reader, right? Mm -hmm. Turn to second Edris. Uh, mm -hmm. And they'll interrupt the reader every third word. You see? And this word means America is fallen and cun. And I just cut you. Eh? And there's this great theater that occurs with scripture. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is re, re a lot of it's simply restating or recasting what it is too. So they'll say, a man came up to Jesus. See, an Israelite came up to Jesus. You know, right. it's like, mm -hmm. but no, you know, we're, I know you're going to continue. I'm so sorry. Th this though makes me wonder if taking in the weakness, and I don't mean that fallaciously or, or rudely, taking in that weakness of that perception of the target audience that we care about. If when we do scripture in a debate, I don't mean we do all that, Alfredo, but if there's a way we as Christian apologists who love these folks for real can say, what is a way they can recognize through their blindness? And again, I know this will sound condescending, but I'm being, right. I'm honestly thinking through it, can help them to see we are clearly citing a scripture right here. Like almost like a more direct or obvious, explicit way we should maybe do it to help them to see this is scripture being referenced. Obviously, we wouldn't do it with the theatrics in that same way, but I'm just I'm just thinking through it as trying to think of a contextualized evangelist, but I didn't mean to interrupt your point. I know you're about to finish. No, I'm so sorry, no, that's fine. No, but I was just... No, no, that's great. That's maybe great. too, it's that, you know, um, at, at least certainly with these one West camps, that there's certain scriptures that they go back to continuously like the the ethnic identity scriptures that is their um their template and as well it is the template that their listeners or their audience those are the scriptures that their audience is listening for and so when when um dr brown comes with scriptures that aren't part of that template that their ears aren't listening mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. They, they they don't pay attention to those scriptures. Only the template is what they're listening for. Why didn't you say scriptures? I didn't hear you say the template that I know. Right. Maybe some of that as well. Yeah, maybe that's like a case of a metal, metal detector can't pick up plastic, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, even though even though in this case both would be metal, but you know, there's something wrong with the calibration there. It's it's hearing or seeing things unless they're from the sort of the standard bag in the standard way doesn't right. recognize it. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, I wonder if there's a way we can say, we can help them see we are, the, I know it's almost like we are citing scripture right now. Cause clearly he did, clearly he was. It's like, cause I saw that comment again and again. Now part of it, I realize it's sort of the stock insult or stock review, meaning it's like, here's this, there's a limited, to accuse the person in the Hebrews like world of knowing script, no scriptures. It's like a way to like, this is man's wisdom, secular wisdom. They're not citing right, it. Right. It's, it's like that kind of thing. So it takes away the power, but it's like, yeah, but they are. So what, so what do you, what are you watching? What do you, and so yeah. trying to maybe figure out a way to help them along somehow. We, I think we gotta, we gotta figure out a way to help them along to see scripture I mean, alert, but without making fun of them, you know, in a way that <laughs> helps them see. Alert. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Oh. It, it's, it's a symptom. Uh, if you think about it, it's a symptom of the doctrine that, you know, you don't take the full counsel of scripture. You proof text it and only really, you know, you don't go to, to all of the scriptures or, or it's certainly you don't correctly interpret it, interpret all of the scriptures. Maybe it's a, it's just a symptom of uh, the doctrine perhaps. Well, kind of like how, um, 
for, for when the, when the Jehovah's Witnesses were really hitting Christians hard, they really started doing it a lot in the seventies and eighties, nineties to a lesser extent, I think. Um, you know, Christians were like, "Whoa, these guys like know the Bible," and and a lot of poorly church Christians crossed over. The JW's biggest field of converts were previously church but currently unaffiliated Christians. People would identify that way. I think that's somewhat similar with Hebrew Israelites, right? And so uh, people would be really impressed, like with the Hebrew with with the Jehovah's Witnesses at your door or wherever they would be. Now it's usually at a bus stop or something like that, um, and. Uh, I think it was Walter Martin that even said the average Jehovah's Witness can turn the average Christian into a doctrinal pretzel in 30 seconds or something like that. And what you would notice is that what the apologists started noticing is, but if you got them off script, they would not be off the cuff very quick anymore because it actually wasn't off the cuff in the first place. And they would turn to their book. Um, they had a couple of different books besides the, what does the Bible really teach? And the main one was reasoning from the scriptures and Christian apologists at that time would kind of joke and say, that's the equivalent of their Holy spirit. That's where they go when they don't know. And I remember the first time when cracked it open, I was like, Oh, it's true with the, what the, what the apologists taught me. They cracked that open when they don't know what to do. And he cracked open the reasoning from the scriptures book. And I was like, Oh, and so I feel like it's kind of like that with a lot, not all, but a lot of the Hebrews lights where there's a certain thing and they know that. And it's like, Whoa, dazzling. Right. But you know, they're doing it every Saturday, but you get them off and it becomes like, well, what about this over here? Mm -hmm. well, wait, wait, we can't discuss this. No, we really can't discuss this. They have no, often no clue. Right. And they usually don't know how to make their way through it to interpret it because they don't usually have those tools. So they don't have the rote memorization of what it's supposed to mean. Navigating through it is often a train wreck. Now, this is kind of irrelevant directly to this debate, although not entirely, but I'm just saying for the, a lot of the average Hebrews, but, we got to figure out how to help them to see this is scripture, folks. We are quoting the right. Bible right here, you know, right. as Dr. Brown did, and they didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. 